again. Hi. You're back? That's good. <laughs> well, we are... Where is my camera? For, oh, there it is. My Facebook Live. We are Facebook Live again, which is nice. Courtesy of Brandon, told us how to do that. In about two seconds, we upgraded our branding in, in, in minutes, which was nice. But uh, welcome to Green Global Real Estate Education Network. I talked to a few of you. Let me move this one seat this way. I want you to. So I can see your face back there. There you go. Larry, don't move for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have to. All right. Um, we started this in February. Uh, well, we started this about three and a half years ago. Finally, in February, we got this thing on. We, we put a lot of money in it. We put three and a half years of everyday sweat equity in this thing. And we finally got it moving. I just got back from Florida. Signed up a bunch of people down there. Got three separate groups going to start down there, maybe four, all in the same little area. So they don't have to be in different town, the cities, because you can do this thing virtually. Like I just got done talking to a few of these guys. You want to be the star of your own show? We'll show you how to do that because everybody was from somewhere, except Larry. His family was born here. Back in the 1800s or something. Uh, real quick before we get going, I'm going to bring Brandon up. We'll show us. We like to do a little bit of fun education here to, to kick us off. So, Brandon's going to do a little bit more of social media education. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Glad you guys are here today. I know we had that little tornado that came through or a little light tonight and stuff, but I'm just really excited that you guys are here. Um, we've got a, um, an upcoming weeks. I believe Steve or Mark's going to be announcing who we've got, but we've got a monster that's coming in next week, and so we're really excited. What I'd like to do, everybody got their cameras? Everybody got their phones? Yeah. Let's get in and go to Facebook. <coughs> Bless you. Everybody in? Facebook. And what's the number? All right, here we go. Y'all know what we normally do. Get on what's what's on your mind, and let's check in. Y'all see the uh, the red? Let's go ahead and check in, because that way everybody knows what you're doing right now. So as you see there, when you hit that, if it's not already up there, it says Global Real Estate Education Network. Did anybody say that? Click it. Put on here, what's on your mind? Glad to be here. There we go. Got that. And now you guys know what we're going to do. We're going to hit it. We're going to hit it. Send it. We're send it. Post? Post. There we go. Uh, now, let's see. It might say on there when you do that, uh, when is this place open? Does anybody have that? Yeah. All right, I do too. Um, wow. Just hit um, open during specific hours. And then is the right place learn from green? Is that correct? I got Global Real Estate Education, Education Network. Network. Is this Network. the right website for this it's place to learn from green? Yes. yes. All right, so we're doing it. So anyway, we've got that going. And uh, guys, that's one of the things. If you guys want to get on and do Facebook Live, be more than uh, please do. I mean, because the more guys that we get in here, the biggest and bigger this group's going to get. And that's really the, the success of the group. So in any case, I really appreciate it. Do you want to come back up? Yeah. Or? yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Yes, sir. For those of you who missed the last time, if you ever wanted to do that, do that Facebook, push go live. I don't know if you guys ever did that. You can show property with that. You can show your business with that. You know, and, you know, put some old ladies' money at the bank kind of thing. You can show live and all that stuff. Um, we'd like to do a little bit of education first before I introduce Steve. We've got plenty, we got a little bit of time left. 
I was reading uh, Dale Carnegie, and, and Carnegie, if you ever, anybody know who he is, we all should. He says, without proper rewards, a team can quickly become unmotivated. Here are five tips from Dale Carnegie to ensure your team receives praise for each success. Keep a record of those, of those successes. Pay attention to each success on your team and recognize individual efforts. Identify your top performers and reward their achievements accordingly. Make your recognition sincere. Paul Kazanowski, who was up here talking the other day, he was all this. Remember, it's all about heart. It's all about, hey, how you doing? It's all about heart. So, you know, give your, make it sincere and make it from your heart that you actually appreciate what they do. Be specific in your praise. Because vague compliments can be often misconstrued as insincere. Match your reward with your achievement. It's important to scan rewards, bigger rewards for bigger accomplishments. Give them the same reward each time. You know, sometimes they get the, their feelings hurt. Be spontaneous. When the reward is too predictable or, or unexpected or expected, it diminishes your effectiveness. Top performers with a surprise launch or gift card to their favorite store to keep them happy and engaged. And hold yourself accountable as leader of the groups. Your responsibility to your employees is to motivate and engage them. Put in your time to learn about each of your team members so that you know what incentives are good for them. When it comes time to provide a successful employee recognition and rewards that are specific to them. Speaking of rewards, this girl right here, we got her in about three weeks ago. She comes in my office. She says, I got about five of my friends want to join. So she got one already. <laughs> so we were just talking about giving a recognition for reward for in a spontaneous fashion. So, Stephen, I wanted to give you a a free lunch at Jason's Deli. There you go. Uh, you'll have more of your, your friends and, uh, and enjoy it on us. Thank you. A little quote from Dale Carnegie says, You can make more friends in two months by becoming more interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get people interested in you. Steve says this all the time to me. This, this business is all about the other person. If you share, if you're a giving person, this business would, and anything you do, the banking business, whatever, customer service, and it's all about them, they'll keep coming back to you. So that's it for now. I'm going to introduce, this is like you can from that Facebook Live. That's all. I'm going to introduce Steve now, and we're going to talk about you going to talk about the real estate or you're going to do We're going to talk about property valuations. Let's talk about property valuations now and then we'll go into maybe some green stuff a little later on. My partner, Steve Chase. Steve. All right, like I said, uh, thank you, Mark. Like I uh, said, use my uh, terms. I, uh, I'm a little in pain recovering from a CrossFit workout. But, uh, hey, 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 several hey, CrossFit hey, workouts, hey. actually. Um, but. Uh, so, um, just uh, for the, all the new faces here, welcome. My name is Steve Jason. I'm one of the founders of the company along with Mark. Uh, and just so everyone knows, uh, we for the new faces here, uh, this meeting is always free and open to the public. We meet here once a week. We will be having other meetings in, in other venues, locations across town. Uh, in pretty short order, we'll be doing these in Marcus Grow and Franklin. Uh, this meeting is our investor club meeting. It is free and open to the public. And as Mark alluded to, we do have a, a business opportunity that is a network marketing business that is an education component of what we do with online masterminds and training. Uh, and one of our trainers will will mention at the end um, what we coming up next week. I'm going to use uh, the board on this. We're going to talk a little bit about. 
the one day that we put this yeah the up, one day yeah yeah exactly i just thought i'm going to go ahead and um yeah, so you get the other um, side yeah you want to move it that way one day we put this in front so. all right we're talk about property valuation all right i'm going to ask you guys some questions uh so we've got two mortgages we got someone from parks and what uh are, are you uh steven steven what do you work with i am a freelance copywriter working with basically clients as they come usually non-profit okay okay so you're just here to learn about real estate pretty much okay you, um, you guys mortgage business real estate real estate real estate uh investor 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 um several angles okay so uh i know you've flipped property we've done deals together anybody flipped a house in here yet you flipped houses okay uh mark you flipped plenty of houses um yeah. and so when when you uh, uh I, I i'm gonna go ahead and just engage a little bit. uh have you done this as a living consistently or or has this been more of a onesie twosie thing that comes up maybe every once in a while i've been investing in flipping houses for 30 years wow. on and off um, okay. i had a company as a life coach and okay. flipped houses on the time wow. okay great great do you do it here in middle testing no I, last thing i did was five years ago in north carolina okay so cool. I've been Which, that was an interesting game. time uh what part of north carolina uh asheville henderson oh, so you're in the mountains new construction no, I didn't do new construction. No, Asheville, they built a lot. Mike, of Mike was. They are yeah, they did a lot of new construction over there. We school all the time. Well, we had a uh, development in Asheville that uh, kind of came into play. Had three houses built, and the rest of it. Well, anyway, that was. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was um, Damn, so uh, when when you and I'm just going to use as an example, when you bought your houses, uh, how, were you an agent? No. What did you rely upon for valuation? Um, I had friends who were agents. They okay. helped. Um, I I did a lot of tax research. Okay. Um, tax present. Mm -hmm. Write some of this down. Agents. They use agents. Tax card. Okay. Any other particular? I don't mean to put you on the spot. No, that's all right. I'm trying to think what else I. Well, signs, the next neighbor signs, or local local signs, you call all those people, too, right? That's right. And uh, open houses and um, any Anytime uh, I got a chance to talk to realtors about what was available out there. Okay. Okay. And no um, right there. So the ones that you found, did they, did they, did all your properties actually come from agents? No. Okay. Where did, uh, uh, where did you get them from? Sometimes, well, I, I bought them at auction. Yeah. We've um, been there before. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I did a lot of tax research and, and a lot of uh, newspaper research, auctions. Well, not on doors. Knocked on doors. Did you really? I did. Oh. Okay. I got chased off with a shotgun. Wow. <laughs> that has not happened to me yet. <laughs> so I'm going to pick up on some of these points. So, and, and I'm going to elaborate just a little bit. So we're, we're, we're going down a couple of different paths there. Really what it comes down to is a lot of us really, one of the things that holds us back the most from buying real estate, we simply just don't know what it's worth, right? So if you really knew, if someone came to you today, and I don't know, what is, what is, what is Apple stock sell for? What's it per share? If somebody knows this. I want to know. This. All right. I don't know. All right, let's say it's hundred dollars a share. I, I, was, I don't know. <laughs> Apple sells for hundred dollars a share, and somebody tells you, hey, you can buy Apple for eighty dollars a share. Are you gonna buy that? Mm -hmm. You're gonna do that. It's a pretty, pretty sure deal. Well, what happens in real estate is. When you do enough of this, you know what that hundred dollars a share means. You're going to be able to recognize when eighty dollars a share is staring you right in the face. 
So half of the battle in property valuation is you actually getting out there and making the contacts with people in, in various measures, various forms, the door knocking, uh, researching the tax cards, speaking to the real estate agent, physically going into the open houses, viewing the homes as a consumer, okay? because then you're going to learn how to think like a horse trader thinks. And a horse trader isn't going to trade that horse without looking at teeth. In, yeah. in other words, he's going to physically see what he's trading. So, and I'm going to carry these points a little bit further. Everybody wants to do these real estate deals, but nobody's, you know, willing to get out and, and dig in and find out what the values are and start talking to people. Um, you mentioned auctions. Now, I do auctions, and, and if you've got to go. If you're going to be in this game consistently, this is going to be a part of your repertoire. You have to go consistently if you plan on flipping property. It's a really, really big angle. Now, guess what? I, I can tell you right now, you go to, to a Davidson County auction and it is an absolute slaughter. It's, it's vultures. Yeah. The, the margins they're operating <coughs> above are lean. Um, it's hard to compete unless you have some special niche that's going to give you uh, some advantage. And so, and, and let me, Does it let me, I'm going I'm to broad, draw the broad picture of this. I'm talking about, when we're talking about property valuation today, property valuation, there are many ways to evaluate property, both residential and commercial. We're just talking about market value here. We're talking about residential. Okay. Now, when you get into commercial property, you start applying things called cap rates and operating income. And, and commercial property is going to be looked at quite a bit differently than residential property. We're all here looking at residential property. We want to know what it's worth. Um, if you are a real estate appraiser that has something called the Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice, of use that. About a 70-page handbook that anybody can read. It talks about appraisal standards. It's a really quick, easy read. If you guys ever want to Google something called USPAP, mm -hmm. what the appraisers use. Now, you guys, as loan officers, there's some loan officers in here. Um, appraisals have to get done on these properties, and that actually has a tremendous impact on. Like, do I need to stay in the? <laughs> I just saw him. <laughs> I jumped out of the screen. Yeah, and now I moved back. I think somebody was sleeping back there, or, or drinking maybe. I don't know. <laughs> hey, are they sipping the sauce back now? <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, by USPAP standards, I mean, I'd like to try to put this in a way that's as understandable as possible, where everybody can kind of practically apply it. Um, by, by professional appraisal standards, there's, we use, for the most part, what we call the market approach to property. And a, a, an appraisal will have three comparable sales. Now, by appraisal standards, they'll say one year. A lender's going to want six months, at least in our market. Okay. <laughs> um, so really, when you're looking at the value of a property, trying to figure out what it's worth, you need to find... The most important things you can find, three sales in the last six months. Now, some of the places you can look, and it just depends on your geographic location. In Davidson County, the first thing that you're going to want, you're going to want a property of relatively the same age, the same size, the same style, but location, or we want to say subdivision. Location is first, subdivision. Okay, so you always want to think three sales, six months, same, same subdivision. If you cannot, and, and we want relatively same size, if I'm thinking in terms of square footage, this is above grade square footage only. Now, when we're talking about 
and, and if I'm going to pick these three comparables first, I'm going to do two story to two story, ranch to ranch, ranch, that's a one level, one level. And then you can use a, uh, quite frankly, a split level you can compare to a basement ranch for functional purposes. But a three level split, it's kind of the same thing you can compare it to something that has below grade square footage. But these are true comparables. You do not compare one story to two story homes, you just don't do it. And you want relatively the same age, size, as close as possible, and then three sales in the last six months. You really need to think this way if you're thinking about the value. If you really want to understand what this property is worth, this is what it's worth. This is what's going to solidify in your mind how to pull the trigger on the front end of a purchase, okay? If you know you're really getting a good deal or what you even have to offer to know that you can sell it on the back end. Um, I apologize for my insane left-handedness, which leads to poor handwriting. I'll try to straighten it up just a little bit. Um, so I'm going to take this back just a little bit. We go to location subdivision. If you can't find properties in the same subdivision, you need to try to lurk first of all in the same elementary school district. <coughs> if you can't find that, you want to try to stay within the same zip code, <coughs> preferably within um, the same major arterial thoroughfares. In other words, if you've got Interstate 65 on one side, and you've got I-24 Boring in another side. In other words, Old Hickory Boulevard. Okay, so if you can stay within the same subdivision and you can't find a you can't find a comparable there, try to stay within the same elementary school district. That's a big driver of value for a lot of people. A lot of the market moves according to elementary school. When you get into rural property, a lot of times you have to stretch all of this. Okay, and then in that situation, normally. We want to stay within, stay within the same taxing jurisdiction, jurisdiction, or that could be a county. Okay. If you get land as much as possible, you get 100 acres. You, you'd like to stay within the same county. You may not find uh, comparable land with 100 acres. Okay. So when you're when you're lining up your comparables, three. Sales in the last six, say, six months, relatively same age and size, and stock. Okay. Um, when I say same age, um, if I if I've got a property, let's say it's built in 1990. Let's use some common sense here. Okay. Most people know you got a house built around 1990, and your house is. Probably going to be closest 85 to about 2000. Maybe. I mean, you could stretch that either way. Ideally, we'd like to find the same subdivision built in 1990. So, what you start doing is you, you can expand out and you look at things rationally to determine is this really something that's close? What, what is different in, the, in how I'm looking at this value? Um, a couple of other things you need to remember that things that people like to, uh, I'm going to go ahead since we started down this path. People like to say, well, look at the dollar per square foot in the subdivision. Um, I really don't like doing that because mm -hmm. there's a, 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 a tremendously apparent difference in the, it, 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 there's a diminishing value in dollar per square foot, a significantly diminishing value in dollar per square foot as a home gets larger. And that's a function of cost, which cost approach is another way of looking at value. But basically, you have one home, okay, you got one lot, same cost, even if the house is bigger or smaller. Okay? You've got one roof, same cost. That's why a two-story home Cost less to build per square foot than a one-story home. Okay, you've got 
all this, all your permitting, all your fees, all your site work, okay, all that is built into your price. So let's say you've got a 3,000 square foot home and a 2,000 square foot home in the same subdivision. The lot costs are generally going to be relatively similar. Let's say the lot cost on that home was $50,000. Okay, you've already got, uh, so dollars per feet, 50,000, 3,010, Okay. You've already added 8.7. Seven dollars square foot just on the lot cost. Yeah. Follow that? Mm -hmm. Just in a 1,000 square foot difference in home. So always remember if someone tries to tell you that you're looking at dollar per square foot in the subdivision, you can't look at just the dollar per square foot in the subdivision. You can look at the dollar per square foot in the subdivision of 1,750 to 2,250 feet in this case, and maybe you know, maybe maybe 2,500 to 3,500, slightly larger home, um, smaller percentages. You, you can look at these numbers around that find out a dollar per square foot. <laughs> You're not going to look at a dollar per square foot, 3,500 square foot homes, and say that has anything to do with the valuation of 1,700 square foot home. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, when you take a property that is more rural, <clears throat> you need to think about something. Very important principle. You may ever heard of fieldstone farms? Oh yeah. So homogeneity. Anybody ever heard of homogeneity? Has nothing to do with any kind of alternative lifestyles or different philosophies of the world. It's homogeneity. It's the principle of being the same. If you look at fieldstone farms in Franklin, you've got three thousand homes. Yeah. Has a higher dollar per square foot and it's just really just just keep production crap out, okay? Mm -hmm. Built in the 90s, 2000s. Very nice family subdivision, but you have a very fluid market for trading, and therefore it really reflects on the dollar per square foot scale closer to what Franklin is worth, which means Franklin is undervalued. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you look, anytime you have more of the same, it's easier to sell. And you need to think about that when you're an investor, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, we bought a property in Kingston Springs. It was a log home on six acres. Now, log homes on six acres can be nice. Log homes on six acres can be not so nice. <laughs> okay? I would get this in your head without having three comparables already in place. If anybody in the loan business knows trying to get a log home on six acres finance is a nightmare. Okay, mm -hmm. we bought this thing dirt cheap. Okay, bought it for a hundred and six thousand in an auction. Um, flipped it for one seventy five and didn't have to do anything to it. Zero, and it was probably worth over two hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we gave somebody a deal. Okay, but you 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 need to in that situation. See, this is not lenders like this. Lenders don't want to be stuck with a property. It's a value proposition for them too. They're going to more readily make a loan based on this property being homogeneous with other properties. So this particular home in Kingston Springs um, could have been a nightmare if there were that we had some very nice comparables that popped our value in at an easy 225 on this thing. I mean you had to really uh, I mean you you could not not make it worth 225 on paper, even though it wasn't that big of a house. It was just it was six acres. Um, so you always want to think when you're thinking of a value, or like for valuation purposes, for investment purposes, as a real estate agent, as a flipper, always nice to have something that looks like everything else in the community. Okay, 
when you get something that is, you know, what, let's, uh, you know, some things that are not necessarily homogeneous. That, um, well, I mentioned one, um, properties, rural properties. Um, wood siding. Now, I, I did sell a house. I forget the gentleman's name. Um, it was over on the uh, off of uh, Old Natchez. Uh, it was on the Harpeth River, and um, we're in this house. It's a wood sided house, and uh, I was with this music producer guy. And, and he's like, man, this house is just really cool. And I'm like, yeah, it is. And he didn't wind up buying it, but another guy happened to be a music guy. This was about two years ago. And um, we go out there, and it was a foreclosure. And something that normally wood is not good, but we're, we're talking about okay. things that are unique versus homogeneous. Anyway, it turns out this home was, uh, and I guess the foreclosing company didn't know this, but we did a little research, and it was designed by the most famous architect in Nashville history. <laughs> this guy did a bunch of contemporary homes, and there's nothing that sells for like less than a million and a half anywhere. And the house was amazing. We got it for like, uh, I guess, uh, six hundred thousand. And so that was a unique situation. We could go in, we could tell the house was really solid. There was something about it. I'm not a big fan of wood siding. It doesn't fall under this sort of homogeneous. So there's something, even though you might not like that cookie cutter kind of like plastic house, everybody wants their house to be uh, unique. But there's something to be said about it. And, and Sometimes you just got to use your common sense. You got to dig a little bit deeper to, to figure out you know, what the value. Um, so, a couple things I want to touch on also. You mentioned um, you talked to a lot of real estate agents. Uh, real estate agents, starting a conversation with real estate agents can be a great way to learn, even with other real estate agents. And, uh, yeah, um, we come here to have these conversations, and you know, we we come here to talk, uh, and and hopefully, I, I tell everyone this: what we're doing, and this is a a marathon, it's not a sprint, it's not a get rich quick thing. We come here to network, talk, learn. And there are other people that have perspectives that I don't have, and I like hearing their stories. And uh, you know, stuff when you come back from Florida, Mark, you know, that's a uh, you you've got good information from other places. But all of these things go into your understanding of the valuation of the property. Because ultimately, you got to pull the trigger. Okay? And so you're going to have to set these little data points in your mind that are going to make you confident enough to pull the trigger. Simple as that. Now, you, you, I mean, we could be like... You know, who wants to be a millionaire? You know, you could call a friend. You know, I mean, you get you get as many guesses as you want here. I mean, but but you still got to go. You got to go because these things, believe me, they don't wait on you. And when that deal comes, when it when it does hit, if it happens to hit any of you guys and you can't do it, you call me. And then nine times out of ten, I'm gonna tell you it's a crap deal. It's just the way it is. Um, you know, people. Hit me up all the time. Hey, Steve, what do you think about this? I, I think it sucks. But thank you for calling me. <laughs> and, and I'm going to save you uh, from this bad deal next time when somebody tries to take them up. So that's that's something to keep in mind, is that we expand our knowledge by talking to other people just like we're doing in the group. Just like we're not here today. Um, Okay. Um, and then we have CRS data. So we have the MLS and we have CRS data. So we're talking about property valuation. 
um, multiple listing service. Uh, one thing I would recommend, if you're not a real estate agent, make friends with one. Um, you know, make friends with real estate. I, mean, I guess kind of everyone here has. Um, make friends with, well, your mom's a real estate agent. <laughs> so I guess everyone, I, I, and I guess you might be making some friends with a real estate agent. If you're serious about learning about real estate, you need to gather this data. If you're really serious, you need to, you know, go, Mr. Agent, I'd like to be your assistant. And uh, technically, you can be an assistant for, I don't know, maybe printing one flyer a month. <laughs> and, uh, and they'll let you uh, pay the $20 a month fee, and you get the access to the multiple listing service. And you also can, and, and now, technically, you have to be an assistant. And it has to be legitimate, and I'm I'm only advocating legitimate assistant type relationships. I'm just telling you, if you want this data, you either need to be an agent or you need to have an agent that's a good friend. Another another thing we have this courthouse retrieval service data that has uh, tax information that's entered into the local courthouses, and it is really really handy to have. Um, and it, it has various metrics, various forms of I'll make it to where I can come uh, analytics and ways you can break down data. So it's, it's good stuff to be able to use. And it's very handy. Now, I have to be a numbers guy. So I am efficient at this. Okay, so I can look at a page of numbers and anomalies will jump off the page to me. Um, because that's part of when you're in the game long enough, it becomes it's easier. It's easier. Just a couple of things to remember about property valuation. Those are very useful and easy tools if you have access. So if you're not an agent, as I said, um, you need to be friends with an agent. You need to uh, um, try to get access to this data. Um, another thing, uh, always keep in mind, guys, if you've got let's, condition okay there are some things that can it can really uh, this is where you just got to get out and experience more of this get some friends that kind of know what they're doing get some friends not who just know how to do it professionally but who know how to do it cheap too but Left -handed eyes. Um, if you have a 2,500 square foot house, your repair dollar per square foot generally anywhere from ten dollars to if this is a newer home, maybe you could spend up to fifty dollars a foot on on repairs for a home like that. Well, that's, those are big numbers. <laughs> so a lot of times, you know, if, if the condition of the property is poor. And you start underestimating things, and, and you know, replacement windows, roof, paint, flooring. There's there's things that look easy to me, um, and and I can kind of ballpark this stuff a lot of times. But you need to get out and ask questions, invite people out to see your deals, your properties, and more importantly, you know, we've discussed this. A thousand times. If any of you here come across real estate deals, you need to find someone else in the room that might either buy it from you on a wholesale, or partner with you, or go down that path somehow. Uh, because I know if it's worth it, I certainly would. And Larry might. He's done that once or twice. Brandon might. Mark might. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, See that? I don't know if you. Um, so just remember that you, know, you need to look at these properties. What I like to do when I get that list of properties, I look at those comparables. I actually go see them. That's another thing. Just having the comparables is one thing. But you know, your house has five pit bulls next door mm -hmm. and little pieces of like you know mangled flesh laying in the front yard. <laughs> you know, they, they feed it. They feed it a chicken every day. <laughs> you know, there's like. Yeah, so it's uh, uh, and that's obviously not going to be quite as attractive of a property. So just keep that in mind. Um, physically go out and see these things too. Um, and lastly, 
Remember, uh, if you are a member of Green, I am always here to answer the questions, okay? There's a good chance, and I'm not saying this to my own horn, but when it comes to property valuation, I probably probably know it better than, than most people. Okay? And I say that because this is, I offer this as just goodwill towards man, okay? <laughs> Uh, we don't want to see people get hurt. We want to see make good decisions. So, um, all right, uh, we're about yeah, give me, ready. Give me a second. Okay. All right, that's it for now, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh,